Hi, everyone. My name is Pete Witte, and I'm the lead analyst for global private equity here at EY. And you're listening to the PE Pulse mini series on EY's Next Wave Private Equity podcast. Over the next few minutes, we'll talk through some of the things that we're seeing in the market here at EY, and we'll try to keep it short and sweet, right? What are the four to five things that you really need to know about what's going on in the private equity market right now? Besides the podcast today, we've got a great written report as well that talks through a lot of this in more detail. And to see that, you can just visit ey.com forward slash PE Pulse. So let's get started. And first off, I'm going to preface this by saying that this quarter's podcast is going to be a little heavier on the macro environment, right? Because that's really what's top of mind for investors right now. You think about private equity, right? And the period in which it really came of age. And let's say that's been roughly the last 15 years or so. From a macro perspective, you know, the bulk of that period was, for the most part, characterized by strong growth, low inflation, low interest rates. And now we're heading into a period where that might be changing. To what degree, for how long, we don't yet know, right? But that uncertainty is going to impact both the outlook for new deals and also the way that private equity firms interact with their portfolio companies that they have right now. So let's unpack this and we'll start with deals, right? And I think anybody who is in the industry or adjacent to the private equity industry, you know, knows that last year was absolutely tremendous year for private equity, right? We saw record levels of activity. PE uh, passed the trillion dollar mark for the first time ever in terms of the total value of deals that were announced. We actually closed out with $1.2 trillion in deals. And part of that was pent up demand from the pandemic, right? Markets shut down, people couldn't do deals when it reopened. You know, deals were hard to price because you didn't really know what the outlook was going to be. And that sort of resolved over the course of last year. And you had this tremendous rebound in the M&A markets and private equity was a big part of that. So we sort of knew going into this year that some measure of softening was probably on the table. And that's exactly what we've seen. First quarter this year, we saw deals announced worth about $220 billion. That's a decline of about 27% from the first quarter of last year. What I'd really like you to take away from this, though, is that this level of activity is still very robust, right? In fact, if it were to keep up at this level, and we'll talk about whether that's likely in a minute or so, but it would still be the second busiest year on record, you know, behind last year. So it's still been really busy, just not quite at the breakneck pace of last year. And to me, one of the things that was really interesting and maybe even telling was that the pace at which capital was deployed in the first quarter remained relatively steady over the course of the quarter. January, we had about $70 billion in deals announced. In February, it was up to about 80. March, we had another 70. So just really consistent throughout the quarter, right? We didn't see a drop off in March like you might expect. And I think that's because, you know, the deals that were in the pipeline at that point were far enough along that they were able to go through despite the geopolitical turbulence that we saw starting in late February. And so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens over the course of the next month or so, right, with deals that aren't as far along and the degree to which some of the atmospherics that we're starting to see now, you know, really start to impact that which takes us to the war in Ukraine and the impact of that. And we're going to separate this out into primary impacts and secondary impacts. And the primary impacts, you know, are actually pretty limited. If we look at private equities, investment activity in Russia and the Ukraine as well, you know, there's really not much there. You know, I counted deals worth about $4 billion over the last 10 years. And now maybe there's more than that, you know, things that aren't being reported, but that's sort of the magnitude of activity there. And to put that in perspective, over that same time period, you know, last 10 years, private equity firms have done deals valued at about five, six trillion dollars across the rest of the world. Right. So in the scheme of things, it's well under one percent of global private equity investment activity. And you haven't really seen any of the large global firms really being active there. And then there's a few other first order effects specifically where firms are double checking their investor list, making sure they're not dealing with sanctioned individuals. For some LPs, they've announced that they're divesting from Russian assets entirely. And so any funds that do have exposure, they have capital from those LPs, then they've obviously got to address that. But by and large, those situations are really on the margins. What's more important for private equity firms are the second order impacts. Private equity firms manage somewhere around 20,000 portfolio companies around the world. And so the follow on effects of sanctions, the supply chain issues, the banking disruptions, the higher commodities prices, 
all of these things have the potential to impact the port codes. And the nature of those impacts, you know, obviously is gonna be highly specific to each company. For a European manufacturer that relies heavily on commodities inputs, there's likely some significant headwinds. Uh, for a consumer products company that's sensitive to energy prices, same thing. In the banking sector, you've got disruptions to asset flows. And so the bottom line, I think, is that firms are doing the same thing that they did during the pandemic, right? It's the same playbook, right? You're going through one by one, you're understanding what your exposures are, you're triaging in order to respond first to those that are most significantly impacted. And then the other open item is really around what happens with respect to inflation and interest rates. At the beginning of the year, we were in a situation where we felt like things were pretty well mapped out. Now that's in flux. And to, so to the extent that rate increases, which of course impact private equity's cost of borrowing, get delayed, they get reduced, they get accelerated, increased, all of that could impact the pace of deployment for the rest of this year. Beyond that, there's a couple other things that are worth mentioning. The first is around exits. Exits have seen more dramatic declines than we've seen on the acquisitions front, based partially on their greater sensitivities to some of these macro externalities that we've been talking about. We saw exits valued at about $290 billion in the first quarter. That was down almost 60% by value from the first quarter of last year. And I think there's a few dynamics that are at work here. For strategics, you know, they sort of stepped back, I think, in order to focus on the potential disruptions to their core business. So we have seen some declines there. I think what's probably more interesting is the more dramatic declines that we've seen in the public markets, right? So sales to IPOs, sales to SPACs. Last year, sales to SPACs of PE-backed businesses, that was about $150 billion. First quarter of this year, $9 billion. And that's because the pipe financing that's needed to support these deals has stepped away for uh, the time being. And the investors in the SPACs themselves, they're choosing to redeem shares rather than go into new deals because the market's been so tough. And that's not a dynamic that's limited just to private, you know, deals that involve private equity. That's across the board, but it is effectively closing off SPACs as an exit route. And it's a similar dynamic in the IPO market. Last year, private equity-backed companies raised $110 billion in the IPO market. First quarter of this year, $3 billion. So the window is just not really open right now. But in the meantime, I think we're going to see private equity firms do what they've always done, which is continue to execute on a strategy. And then when the conditions are more amenable, they'll look to exit. The last thing I want to touch on just briefly is the secondaries market, right? Because that market is playing a bigger role than ever in the private equity ecosystem. And that's going to be the case regardless of what happens from a macro perspective. You know, you look back 10 years ago, that market was pretty immature, right? There was limited liquidity. The sellers that were there were a lot of times distressed. Today, it's a whole different story. More than $100 billion in fund interest changes hands every year. And at one time, a lot of those deals were led by LPs. They were looking to offload their interests. Today, GP-led secondaries were funded saying, you know, hey, we think this asset has some additional runway. We'd like to hold on to it for longer now those types of deals account for most types of secondary deals. And so for the LPs, they provide optionality, right? Those that want to continue with the asset can, those that want liquidity are able to get it. And I think with firms returning to market, you know, faster than ever to raise new funds, that optionality is becoming a lot more important. And I mentioned this because whatever happens from a macro perspective, right, the secondary market is going to be an important part of that. If volatility recedes and the market stabilizes, you know, then we likely see more continuation activity. If the opposite occurs and fundamentals start to do, uh, deteriorate, then you're going to have LPs looking to rebalance their portfolios. And so a lot of money has been raised for this market and for very good reasons. So those are some of the key dynamics from the first quarter, right? Some measure of softening on a deals front, but still an overall very active market and firms are trying to understand all the moving parts of the macro environment and what that means for both deployment and for their port goes. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next quarter.